Psalm chapter 88. A song or a psalm for the sons of Korah, Levites, to the chief musician upon Malath Lenina. And note here says, dancing with glad, with glad noises. That's kind of odd title for what the topic of this psalm is about. Mishkiel, which is instruction of Heman the Ezrahite. Now, this is not the same Heman that's mentioned in, in David. I ran the reference, and there is there's a couple Hemans in the Bible. So, O Lord God of my salvation. That's the very beginning. If your salvation is not the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jesus Christ, who was virgin born in the tribe of Judah, you don't have a salvation. So, o Lord God of my salvation. So, the writer of the Psalms are already starting out with one, two, three, four, six words my salvation. And it's the Lord God's, it's, it's my salvation, but of the Lord God. I have cried day and night before thee. And we're going to get ourselves into a psalm here about depression. And if it's not depression, it's crying out to God and God's not listening. And this is a hard thing. And I can't tell you if this is going on in my life right now. That I can actually speak it as so. Because God is answering in some aspects and other aspects. It just seems like there's no answer. And where I be personally is I've learned to a fact is you got to be careful. And if you're going to step into a realm of a ministry where you're going to be helping and dealing with others, you may be dealing with people who you have not had the feelings, had what they're going through. And here's a writer of the psalm saying, I'm crying out night and day before God. Thee, the Lord God, of my salvation. I am saved. I know I'm saved. I know who the Lord God is. And I am crying out day and night to you. Let my prayer come before thee. In your holy presence... And I've had times before and, you know, to think, you know, I've always said God answers prayers in three ways. Yes, no, and not now. God always hears our prayer, those that are saved. And I've really never too recently ever felt God, it seems like, the prayers are not getting to him. Or he's taking a long time in his patience. Incline thy ear unto my cry. And that's a cry. Is that, you know, calling out? Or is that a cry? Tears. And it could be both. As serious as any circumstance would be. And it doesn't tell us what his troubles are. Because he said, for... My soul is full of troubles. And this is not, you know, Lord, bless my food. May we have a good fellowship together in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is a psalmist, right? I am full of troubles and I'm crying out to my God who has saved me. 
And God, will you let this prayer come before? Because some this prayer is being intercepted somewhere. And we know, unlike the psalmist, that for Christians, we know that Jesus Christ prays for us. And we know the Holy Spirit prays for us. That's good to know, isn't it? But you try in your life where you're going through a circumstance, or you're going through a trial and tribulation, and you know God, God, Jesus is praying, you know the Holy Spirit is praying, but you feel those prayers are not being answered. They're not being heard. You're in troubles like Job. And you don't want Job's three friends to show up, and they do. And my life draws nigh unto the grave. I'm dying. This is it. I'm a goner. And there have been times when you get into circumstances like this. Look, many people don't feel and I guarantee many people have failed. Lord, you're not going to answer me. Just, just take me home. I'm done. If you're done, I'm done. And evidently, my prayers are not being answered. Evidently, you know, I don't know what's going on, Lord. And the, the matter, too, is, is not that, okay, God, go ahead, just take me. It's maybe the troubles he's got is they're deadly troubles. They're, maybe he's dying. Maybe he's in circumstances where death is, is happening. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. Death. The urgencies of this psalmist is, looks like one of the troubles he has is death is imminent. And if his death is imminent, Lord God, I am praying for you to intervene and you're not listening. I am as a man that has no strength. I cannot go any further. I can't understand the circumstances. I don't have no weight building. I don't have any physical and spiritual to keep going. I'm at my wit's end, Lord, and I'm reaching out to you. And then another thing for me personally is when the devil comes in and as the devil has and he'll start throwing the scripture at you like he did for Jesus is and for me personally is anything too hard for the Lord and then he'll start listing the problems he'll start putting the circumstances in your life oh if if anything is not anything is not too hard for the Lord, then why is He not taking care and answering it? And there are people. The best thing if they don't know what's through. I, I've got two friends already who who you know. I, I don't know what you're going through. That's the best thing you can say. And I got morons of Job's friends, and they got every other advice, and uh, many of them I, I've got rid of on my Facebook friends. And the only thing you can do is just pray for the person. This guy looks like he's going to die. I don't have strength. I cannot do or undo what's going on in my life. That I've got to call on God. Free among the dead. Like the slain that lieth in the grave. Already dead. Whom thou rememberest no more. And they are cut off from thy hand. And there are people who have died. And they're remembered by their loved ones. And family and really close friends. But there are people who have died. And they may have been co-workers, they may have been casual friends, and then within time, you know what, uh, they forget about you.
There are people who have died, and I, I forgot. Every once in a while, maybe I'll remember their name or something. But pretty much, I don't think about them. And think about think about right now, somebody you have had a friend who's died, and you have not really thought about him. Maybe, like I said, maybe every, maybe every once in a while you will. But, you know, he's, not, he's distant from your thoughts. And the psalmist is right in God. My life is as that dead man. You only think of me just when it comes to thought. I, I'm not. I'm not in your thoughts all the time. He says, "I cry unto you day and night." And you know what I'm like? I'm just like somebody you knew within time, and I've died, and you you've forgotten about me. And something maybe will bring it back up to memory, if even that. There are people in my life who have died, and I don't remember who they were. I don't. don't. And there are people, like I said, you, you get the occasional, you know, you remember. And thy hands, God's hand. God, I'm talking to you. I, I got a serious matter. I got trouble. It's life threatening. It's I'm day and night. I'm crying out to you, God. I'm just as a dead man that has no memory. Almost like a lost man that goes into hell. God doesn't remember his name no more. I'm not in a state of depression because, because I've got mercies and God is blessing me, but there are just some things that, God, where are you? What are you doing? And if you don't do something quick, thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, as low as I can get, low down what he's saying in darkness in the deeps can't see it's blind it's dark i don't know what's going on i don't know what you're doing i have no idea god i've confessed every sin possible i've reached out to you every way possible i talked to you in the middle of the night i talked to you i've done that i'm there I need some idiot to come along. Well, why don't you do this? Wait, what do you mean? What? Why don't I do this? God is not lighting me. God's not showing me. And you're going to come along and tell me like Job's three friends. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me. I, I, that's where I'll separate from that. I don't think it's the wrath of God in my life. I mean, there's things that I've done that God, you know, would be angry for me and sins, but I don't think that's what's going on in my life. He's, thy, thy wrath lieth hard upon me. And thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves, Selah. A second Advent passage. And with troubles we mentioned before, we can jump this off into Israel in the tribulation period where they're getting the wrath and the boot from God. For all that they've done against God and his waves, it's, it's torment, it's a storm. It's not a calm sea. The judgment of God has happened twice. Some people don't believe the gap theory, but the earth was drowned out between Genesis 1-1 one, one, and 1-2. One, and then the God came upon with judgments of Noah's flood. Thou hast put away my acquaintance far from me. There goes his friend. Acquaintance. That would be, this is not David, I'm saying, but an example would be David and Jonathan. Jonathan comes up, David, you know, you know you're going to go, and, and, and my father knows about the kingdom, and, and then Jonathan takes off and goes back to his father and dies in battle. 
And you're there like, well, my friends are gone. I've been there too. I turned to somebody and, oh, okay, bye. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You've been talking about, and then you on me, you go away. Far from me. Thou has made me an abomination unto them, the friends. Man, this is like Job. Job says, my, my own familiar friends, the children that would come to me, my friends would not have anything to do with me. Stay away from him. He's got the plague. Stay away from him. God's so angry with him. If you go close to him, God's going to destroy you too. I am shut up. And I don't mean talking. Like, you know, we tell you to shut up. I mean, I'm locked up. I'm closed in a, in a room. I cannot come forth. I can't get out. I'm in quarantine. I've got a plague and I can't get out. And i got a plague that nobody will come in. I cry day and night. I'm in darkness. I can't see. My friends are gone. And I can't get out of the situation I'm in. And I call upon God and he's not listening. Though he is listening, but my aspect is he's not listening. I cannot come forth. I, I, I am stuck in the misery I am in. Get help. They're gone. Pray to God. Buy a book on prayer. God, I am praying to God. I am saved. God is my salvation. My eye mourneth by reason of affliction. The troubles, the trials, and tribulations. I am in tears. I am upset. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. It ain't a prayer, it ain't a prayer book. I'm calling out to God, I'm reaching out to God, I'm in, in tears. I'm inflicted, I am suffering. I have no friends near me. I have been plagued. I'm calling day and night. A little child puts his hands out and mom or dad picks them up or grandma or grandpa picks them up or a brother or sister picks them up. I put my arms out to God and... Where are you? For God so loved the world. Where's your love for me, God? Where is it? Well, I know what this guy is feeling. I have come down to one word prayers within the last year. Help. And I can't say anything else. This date uh, uh, May 1st, 2019, my wife is comatose in the hospital behind me, and she's just starting dialysis last year. And I called the hospital up. I came get a hold of the nurses to find out how well she's doing. Lord, where are you? And the devil comes up behind you and says, anything too possible for God? Yeah, he can't, hear an, he can't heal an ear infection. He can't comfort me. How dare you say that about God, Sally? How dare you even try to think about where you haven't been in the kind of problems that people have been in? This guy is at a point of death. He says his friends are gone. I have been afflicted. I put my arms out to you, God, and I'm still here with my arms standing out. Wilt thou show wonders to dead? 
what did all the signs and miracles and wonders of Egypt in Exodus, what did that do for anybody who was dead? Either Jew, Egyptian, any other Gentile. What possible good would all those great wonders of Exodus be for a dead person? Nothing. What good did a manna do and the, the Red Sea opening up for Pharaoh and his army? It killed them. It didn't do no good. <coughs> I'm dying, God, he's saying. Signs and wonders ain't going to do me no good if I'm dead. Shall the dead arise and praise thee, Selah, for resurrection? And what he's talking about is, I go in the grave, I die. Elijah and Elijah are going to come along and resurrect my body like they did with the, with the, with the little boy. Jesus with Lazarus, you're going to you're going to call Lazarus out of the grave with my body? Are you going to resurrect my dead body as a wonder and a sign? No, you're not. And I have been times in my own personal life and I have told Jesus, and remember that remember your best friend there? You remember your three best friends and one of them's dead? You remember the first time as God you ever cried, it was at a funeral in a cemetery. Now you know how I feel. Oh, I wouldn't be so you don't know what you would do. Don't wish, you know, you know, how bad, you know, you wish you would go home, you wish you'd die. Job did it, Jeremiah did it. It's in the Bible. And you better be careful when you got a saint and brother in the Lord or sister in the Lord or in your church. They're, they're reaching a point of depression because depression ruined the life of Elijah. When Elijah got in his turmoil, in his depression, God could not use him anymore. That's when Elijah, Elisha had to come in. Shall thy loving kindness. <laughs> Look at him. He, he, God, where are you? You're not answering. Where's your loving kindness, God? Is it going to be shown, declared in the grave? What's the love of God? God is love. What's that do when I'm in the graveyard? And for the Old Testament saint, he's not absent from the body and present with the Lord. He is absent from the body and in the, the, the heart of the earth, Abraham's bosom. He doesn't even get the ability to die and go before God when he died, like we as Christians. And he's saying God's a loving God. Not in the grave. Or thy faithfulness in destruction. He's saying God's faithful. But to my destruction, what does the faithfulness of God do? Shall thy wonders be known in the dark? He's in a place, he's in a position, he can't see nothing. And God may be working in his life and it's just so dark and dreary and just so upsetting. And so uh, if you are doing something, God, can I see it? Thy righteousness. He's, God's righteous. God's wonderful. God's loving kindness. God's faithfulness. Thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness. That's death. What do you remember when you get in the grave? What is remembered when you get to the grave? Now, don't remember some things about you. But as far as an Old Testament Jew, in, in the forms of salvation, when they died, they went to Abraham's bosom. What could they remember?
God, if I die and that's it, all the wonders you do, this is going to be forgotten. I'm just going to rot in the grave into, you know. But unto thee, God, have I cried. Look how many times he's saying it. There are hurting Christians out there. Pray to God, pray to God, pray to God. They are praying to God, and they're not getting an answer. Let's see here. Stay there for a moment. It took... What chapter is in? It took... I'll show you scripture. You want to see scripture? I'll show you scripture. Listen, I'll study this out. It took 38 chapters for God to answer Job. And then it took... It took... By who answers. It took... Open it up here, hold on. Up here, hold on. It took 25, 26 chapters of Job's three friends. Adding worse, adding salt to the wound. And as I now feel as somebody who's in this stance of Psalms, I'm living the book of Psalms now. Personally, I know what it feels like now. When you reach out to God and Never forsake thee or leave thee. Well, it feels like he has. Oh, we're going to quote scripture at you. And you're just rubbing salt in the wounds and you're just doing what Job's three friends are doing. Absolutely nothing and you're making it worse. I've been so aggravated with some of these people when they say things. They think they know it all. They're lucky that we don't go under the Old Testament thing of, of an eye for an eye for a two for a two. Like, oh, well, may it happen to you. I pray it don't happen. I mean, it's frustrating. I, I, I've had the worst day. And I can't explain it. It's just... You don't even know what you're feeling. You don't know why you're crying. But unto thee have I cried, O Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. In the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. <laughs> prevent what? You're going to hear from me all the time. God, my prayer. Is it going to stop you to do what you're doing? Can you stop the? Can you stop at the funeral of the sparrow for a moment and come see me? Can you stop counting the hairs on that guy's head and you pay attention to my prayer? Who cares about the whale in the middle of the Pacific Ocean? What about me, Lord? I mean, there's one thing only right now would be more important than how I'm feeling, God, in my trial. If, if one man to call upon the, the name of the Lord and all the angels in heaven rejoice, amen. All right, then when that's done, can you, me, alone? There's a verse in the Bible, alone in the world without God. You can be alone in the world and with God. You don't think it's so? Then why did Jesus on the cross say, My God, my God, why hast thou for, forsaken me? The moment that the Father turned his back on Jesus in this dying moment when he became sin for man, God said, I ain't had nothing to do with that. Father, I don't hear you. Father, I don't. 
You're forsaking me. You better believe I'm forsaking you. And it hurts. One day, Job chapter 42 will happen. But don't be one of Job's three friends. I, I hope I haven't. I, I, I probably lost a job one time for being a Christian. And then somebody was upset. I told him to calm down or something. I forget what it was. Got them all irritated even more. Well, I guess there's two things you, you should not... Somebody is upset, don't tell them to calm down, relax. And then number two, don't you dare. Don't you dare. Don't you even dare to tell somebody, I know how you feel and you don't. And believe me, I've had people tell me to my face, I know how you feel. And then they give the God-awful advice ever. How dare you think about want to marry another woman? How dare you think? Shut up! Shut up! You don't know what it feels like. When you go home to your spouse and, and you can see them again. When you, you're praying to God and, and you confess every sin and you're seeking God and you're trying to get right with God and you get silence and a darkness that can be felt. And you cry out to God in the darkness that he's been, what have I done wrong, God? And you may not have done anything wrong. God may be trying you and the devil may be trying to hinder you. Lord, why castest, why castest thou off my soul? My eternal being. That part of me, God. I'm yours. My God is salvation. Verse 1. And God, you cast off my soul. I can't say that as a Christian. You know, there's nothing worse that God can do to a, a Christ-honoring Bible believer who's doing right. There's nothing that God can do. I mean, if he takes me home, hey, I'm happy. Glory to God. Paul says, hey, if he, if he absent from the body, hey, glory to God. But it's more needful for me to be here to be with to help you. But for this Old Testament saint, when he dies, he goes off to, to Abraham's bosom and sleeps. Why hidest thou my, thy face from me? Have you ever felt God hiding from you? The eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good, but he ain't watching you. You know what it feels like? Then shut up. This psalmist knows what he's talking about. I know what he's talking about, except for the wrath of God. I don't believe the wrath of God's upon me. I don't understand. I don't know. I'm, I'm dark. I have no idea. Maybe one day, one week, one month, one year, may, the joy will come back. I don't know. And I may not, you know, when we got to Job chapter 42, Job never found out what happened in Job 1 and 2. And there are times you, I'm not going to say mandatory, but there are times in some Christian's life that they come up and God, where are you? And I'm there. And it feels horrible. I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. I'm going to die. The writer of this psalm, it seems to me, 
It's, I don't think it's like Job and Jeremiah. Why didn't I die in the womb? Why was I not stillborn? I think the writer of Psalms 88 is, it's, it's I can't think of the word right now. Um, the doctor will tell you it's, that's it. I had two wives and I can't even think what the word is, terminal. Terminal. I had two wives ready to die. And they stayed and stuck through their pains and problems because they loved me. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. That was me today. You can't live life when the terrors of God are upon you. In trouble, problem. I, I, I pray. God's not answering. I've got tears. I don't even know why. I'm crying all the time. I'm asking God. I'm seeking God. What's the trouble? What's the problem, God? Silence. Life is distracted right now. And the more things that happen, the more it just seems to pile up on you. And God may be just like, I'm just, I'm giving you a break. I'm taking you out of it. Letting you rest. But Lord, it just feels like, you know, everything's closing. I know. I'm taking care of you. Relax. And God always has something better. But when, when you're in this point of view, you don't feel like it's better. You feel like, oh no, I lost something else. I don't have something else. I don't have this no more. And it feels like it's getting worse. And the life distracted me. God, you just totally closed in the door. And God's like, no, just, I hear you. Just shaping you. It hurts a little bit. Hurts a lot of it. Thy fierce wrath, and I, I can't say that for me. He can. Goes over me. I am underwater, he says. And when you've got a life, when you're depressed and, and you're reaching out to God, there's no, it's like that barber you use in the water when you're fishing. In life, you know, you go do, 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 you know, you get a few little nibbles. But depression and, and the problems when it goes underwater. And it's great when God lets it come back up. But for somebody who is under depression and agony and depression, is that thing goes underwater and you got to fight the beast is at the end. And some fish, some beast take a lot longer. And yes, even for Christians, I've heard the story, they, they go under with depression and, and anxiety and they don't come back up and they die. I would assume that feels like the wrath of God. And it may be Satan's wrath. Paul had a life like that. Paul is there, he's bobbing, goes under a couple times, boom, backs up. And then he goes under and stays under for a while. And it was one time, he, he, he his life, he goes underwater and he actually dies being stoned in Lystra. And he's in glory. I believe when he said in the body out of it, I believe that was Paul. And he's underwater and he dies and he goes to glory. And what tragedy he had. He comes popping right back up out, out of that water and he's alive again. I think about my wife Tracy. She she died on me. I think at least two or three times in our lifetime, and she survived more just to be with me. I had one episode when I was backslidden, where I was at a lake in Connecticut, and I drowned. I, I, I literally drowned. And I'm not going to talk about certain, but what God put my hand on, I believe it was God that, that protected me. I didn't drown and die. 
But it's agonizing when you're underwater and you, and you know you're, you're drowning and there's nothing you can do until God comes. And, and let me tell you something else about, when, and I'm not going to, I, I believe this guy is depressed. I'm not near, anywhere near depression. I'm just in, 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 you know, God's not listening to me. Trials, tears, crying. And loneliness. Well, Jesus will sustain you. He'll hold your hand. And don't feel like it. And all those pictures, you know, Jesus, he puts your arm around. It don't feel like he's got his arm around me. Those pictures and those paintings and those 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 things you find on Facebook and, and you know, Jesus holding your hand and puts his arm, that's 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 lies. Because when this writer is writing, God, where are you? You don't feel God wrapping his arms around you. You don't feel the comfort. He says oh, everlasting love. Loving kindness. But I can't feel it. A fierce wrath goes over me and terrors have cut me off. What is God going to do next? How am I going to get out of this? What on earth did I get myself into? And when you got no answers and you're praying to God for answers and you're not getting the answers, you're in darkness feeling like, is it over? When's it going to end? I can imagine Joe felt like that many times. They came round about me daily like water. What? The terrors. Verse 16. Drowning. I can wonder that this him, that this psalmist, at some time, maybe he drowned one time. Maybe that's what he's talking about. They compass me about all together. Excuse me, together. That's what Jonah said. Jonah died in the whale. He says the weeds and the, and the seaweed wrapped around my head and it made it more deadlier for me. Here we go, verse 18. Now we saw his acquaintance, a friend in verse 8. Lover and friend hast thou put far from me. Not only is my acquaintance good, but my friend is gone. Job's wife, you don't ever hear about her again. Curse, does it retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. And his children, his sons and daughters don't come back to the end of the book. Thou has, God has, put far from him. Did he kill his wife and, and family and friends? The guy, widower? In the condition I am in the life I'm, I can read verse 18. It's widowhood. And the wonderful greatness that I've had being married twice and two wonderful women I wanted again. Oh, I don't want to be married. Shut up and leave me alone. Because you don't like marriage. Don't think I don't. But if God didn't take their life, they're gone. They're out of the way. And I think I've never been through what I'm going through right now. But, you know, I've had trials and problems in my life. And God has given me two wonderful, great women I married. And they married me. And they were there. And I hopefully I was there for their problems. But when you get like Job and Jeremiah. Jeremiah had no spouse. Jeremiah had one friend. Don't you be a friend that be like Job's three friends. And my acquaintance into darkness. Is that death? Darkness, death. I got, and if this is the case, now I'm reversed. I became a widower, then all the problems come. But he said, listen, my lover, if this is the case, my lovers, my friends died. 
And I'm in all these troubles and problems and God's not listening to me. It's tragic when you've had loved ones die. And it's tragic when you are involved and you reach out for God for love and reach out for God for comfort and you reach out for God for strength and he's not there. That's hard. That's what, that's what the writer of Psalms 88. I don't know if his lover and friends are, are died or gone, but man, he's drowning. He's sinking. And he comes to God. God, where are you? God. God. And the devil comes up. Anything too possible for God? God so loved the world. He doesn't love you, does he? And the writer of Psalms 88. God. I'm dying. Hello. My friends are gone. My wife is gone. I'm drowning. And Jesus Christ on the cross. My God, my God. Why has thou forsaken me? I'm in a point in my life right now. I, I'm not. I'm not in depression. I hope, Lord God, ain't gone there. I hope not. But I said I, I got two good friends to say I don't know what you're going through. That's the best thing you can do, and the best thing is you can pray. The worst thing you can do is be like Job's three friends. And I am hoping, Lord willing, that God will help me financially. God will help me with my ear. God will help me find another wife. God will help strengthen me. And whatever ministry, I hope that if somebody has the same problem, I won't be an idiot with them. I hope I'll be understanding. But you got to realize that there's another thing too. I've had the loss of a wife. That's not the same as a loss with a parent. Now, thank God my parents are still alive. My mom's saved. My dad's not. I don't know what it is to, to, to lose a parent or a lost one. And then I've heard it's very harsh when a child dies. And I've known a few families where the children died. One of them was a violent death. And I've heard it destroys the marriage. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it don't. And when your Christian friend goes to the cemetery to visit a dead one, they don't need you to say, well, you know, they're dead and they're in heaven. It's so stupid to go to a graveyard. Listen, I've had my best messages with my dead wife in the ground and to the people to the graveyard. I've gone out with my first wife when she died. I, when I feel like this, I've gone to the graveyard and I preach to the dead people there. I preach to my wife. And those are people that didn't give me a hard time. And it's hard when you lived it. And I look back when I never was upset as I am. I mean, I've been a widower. But it has not been as, as bad as it is this time. And so when I read Psalms 88 about this guy who's reaching out to God, I said, God, I got my arms out. Come on, God. You see, look, the little boy, he picked his arms up and mommy came and got him. Mommy, you know, you know, the little boy put his arms out. His sister came and got him. God, I need help. God, God, 
God, hello, I'm trying to get right here. God, what sins are, what am I doing? What is, who, hello, help. And it's a scary feeling. As that time, I, I almost drowned. And it's a harsh feeling. And there's two things I would not wish. I don't have any enemies. So I'm not going to say that. People I, there are people I don't like. I would not wish hell on them. I pray, I pray for their soul. I would not want to wish what any kind of form of... I say depression. I don't... Listen, I'm not going overboard. Please pray I don't. But it's harsh. And the most aggravating thing that's ever happened to me, and I don't know, guys, Psalms 88, it's those people that come up and they got their, they got the great advice. You just keep your great advice, keep it to yourself. I know what God will do for me, and what God will do for me will not be what God deals for that person or what deals with that person. In times like this, today, I needed a wife. I didn't have one. I need God. I got God, but he's not there. Psalms 88. And I can't blame God because Jesus felt the same way. I'm the kind of person, I'm so bold, I, I, I'd be honest with God. I tell God, when I, and I'm not angry with God, I'm angry, oh, I give, I, no, I don't like what some things God do, but I say, Jesus, you remember that time with Lazarus, Mary and Martha in the graveyard? John 11, 35, Jesus wept. I'm weeping. This man lost his friends, verse 8, his lover, and a friend, verse 18. What a friend we have in Jesus. Great hymn, isn't it? Try it when you're praying to God, a friend. We have a great friend in Jesus. You try that when you're praying to God, he ain't listening to you. Try it. Take my hand. Oh, what's it? I can't remember. Take my hand. You know, you know, Jesus, take my hand. It don't help. It's still empty. God is love. Yeah, I know God is love. He said, look, look what he said, verse 11. Shall thy loving kindness, he know God's loving kindness. Thy faithfulness, verse 11. Thy wonders, verse 12. Thy, he acknowledges God's got loving kindness. He acknowledges God's got faith. He acknowledges God's got wonders. He acknowledges the righteousness of God. I acknowledge God. He is my Lord, God, and Savior. If I were to die today, I'm going to heaven. Where are you? I'm crying out to you, Lord. Where are you? Why am I like this? And then some idiot will come up and, well, you You need to say, brother, I'm praying for you. I love you. Lord God, help him. And I want to try all this without medication. I don't want to be medicated. I'm not one of those people who don't take medicine and all that. I'm not, just, I don't want to do it. And I believe in my heart, God is going to give me a wife. God's going to help everything out. I'm impatient. I get aggravated. That's my sins. And it's just funny how Psalm 88, that's tonight's psalm. Yeah, somebody will go through Psalm 88. You know, guy looks like he's in trouble. Somebody who's, who's gone through what I've gone through and even worse. There are people worse than I am. There are people worse than I am. We're in this state. They'll say, wow. I feel for that. And you'll have chapters in the Bible that you read and study. Wow. Yep. That's my life. You know how many times I've read Psalm 88? This Bible I have right here, this Bible I record right here, 
I've read at least once all the way through since 2000. And when this is 2020, that's 10 years. I can do math. At least. And that's not counting my first Schofield Bible. You know how many times I passed Psalms 88? And you realize I said, okay, we've got to do Psalms 88 tonight as a family. I started reading, it's like, I was going to title, this is titled, uh, what's it, what am I titling this? Feeling Depressed and Reaching Out to God. That's the title. You know what I was going to title this when I was reading through this? I was going to title it Stiley Hayward. But what stopped me is where it says, Thy wrath. Verse 16, the fierce wrath. That's not me. That's what stopped me from naming it. Because I don't feel it's the wrath of God. But we need to have understanding for people who are going through things as Christians because we don't understand. And we don't understand that, you know, some, hey, some people, they love it and they're trying to do and they'll say something because they love us. But let's take, we'll go one place and we'll touch. First Samuel. I'll show you a husband that really loves his wife. First Samuel. But you know what? He didn't say the right thing. And he made it worse. And preachers pick on him. I don't. I know where his heart was. And Hannah's upset because she hasn't had any babies. And the other wife, Penua, no, uh, yeah, Penua, she's got the children. Hannah doesn't. Penua's picking on Hannah. So her husband loves her. He loves her. Then said Elkina to her. Then said Elkina, her husband, to Hannah, Why weepest thou? Oh, your wife is picking on me, and I have no children. Why eatest thou not? Why is our heart grieved? She's in depression. Am not I better than ten sons? Oh, Elkina, what'd you do? You open your big fat mouth. You know what you should have done, Elkina? Just wrap your rounds around hand and say, Honey, I love you. Let's pray. Because the next because it breaks out. Hannah prays. Very next in this chapter, Hannah prays. Sometimes we may have good and I've been guilty of it. Sometimes we have good intentions, what we're gonna say. Sometimes a friend told me today. I had to hang up because I just, I don't know where I was today. He says, I don't know how you feel. That was it. And his heart, I know he's praying. And that was the best thing he could say. I didn't take it right. Sometimes the best thing you say, I don't know, I don't know. Sometimes the best thing you don't say anything at all. The best thing you can do is say, Lord God, help that person. Oh, Lord God, I hope you give me a wife. I hope you take care of me. And he's taking care of me. I never thought the day I would ever have where I love the Lord. I know he loves me and I just, I'm getting no answer. Jesus is, is knocking at the door in Revelation 3. 